Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com and I am the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very important and exciting concept the upper motor neuron facial palsy the upper motor neuron facial palsy cranial nerves part 49 facial nerve part 5 facial weakness of central origin in a supranuclear upper motor neuron or central facial palsy there is weakness of the lower face with relative sparing of the upper face a lesion involving the corticobulbar fibers anywhere prior to their synapse on the facial nerve nucleus will cause a central facial palsy. However, occasionally a lesion as far caudal as the medulla can cause a central facial palsy because of involvement of the aberrant pyramidal tract. What are the features of a UMN facial palsy? And how can we differentiate it from an LMN facial palsy? The features of a UMN facial palsy are 1. It predominantly affects the lower facial muscles. So, predominantly lower facial involvement. Patient is always able to close the eye. Since the upper facial muscles are spared, patient is always able to close the eye. Bell's phenomenon is absent. A Bell's phenomenon is a normal phenomenon which is well seen in a person with a lower motor facial palsy. What is Bell's phenomenon? When we ask a person to close the eyelids, the eyeball moves upwards. It's a normal phenomenon. But in a person with a lower motor neuron facial palsy, since he is not able to close the eyelid, when he attempts to close the eyelid, we can see the eyeball moving upwards. So, Bell's phenomenon is a normal phenomenon but well seen in persons with a element facial palsy. Since it is a human facial palsy, the Bell's, Bell's phenomenon is not well seen. Corneal reflex is present. Corneal reflex, the afferent is ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve and different is bilateral facial nerves. Since this is a human facial palsy, corneal reflex is present. Whereas, if it is an element facial palsy, corneal reflex will be absent. Since it is a human facial palsy, orbicularis reflex may be exaggerated. The lower facial weakness, though it is affected, it is never as severe as with a peripheral facial palsy. So, these are the important features of a human facial palsy. Predominantly lower facial involvement, patient is always able to close the eye, Bell's phenomenon is absent. Corneal reflex is present, orbicularis reflex may be exaggerated, lower facial weakness is never as severe with, as with the peripheral facial palsy. Another important concept is the volitional and emotional central facial palsy. There are two variations of central facial palsy. One volitional, second is the emotional. In most instances of central facial palsy, the facial asymmetry is present both when the patient is asked to smile or show the teeth and during spontaneous facial movements such as smiling and laughing. However, however, the spontaneous movements and deliberate willful movements may show different degrees of weakness. When asymmetry is more apparent with one than the other, the facial weakness is said to be dissociated. So, here we can see a wonderful diagram depicting the facial palsy, the emotional facial palsy versus a volitional facial palsy. This is uh, an article given the NEJ, New England Journal of Medicine. So, you have the upper part of this diagram and the lower part of this diagram. Patients with left thalamic, you know, we will talk about the A, B, C part of this diagram. Patients with left thalamic tumor with face at rest A 
and on voluntarily baring the teeth B and on the reflex smiling C. There is right facial paresis on smiling. You can see there is a right facial paresis on smiling but not on voluntary contraction. So here it is not present. This is an emotional facial palsy. So the upper part is an emotional facial palsy. Now we will talk about the second, the lower part. Patients with a lesion at the of the corticobulbar fibers in the genu of the left internal capsule with the face at rest D on voluntarily bearing the teeth E and on reflex smiling F. You can see here there is a right volitional and emotional suprafacial weakness. So there is a right facial paresis on voluntary contraction. So there is a right facial paresis on voluntary contraction but not on smiling. A volitional facial palsy. So this is a volitional facial palsy and this is an emotional facial palsy. So volitional and emotional central facial palsy. Facial asymmetry more apparent with spontaneous expression as when laughing is called emotional facial palsy. Weakness more marked on voluntary contraction when the patient is asked to smile or bare her teeth is called a volitional facial palsy. Volitional facial palsy, the lesion may be either in the cortex or in the subcortical bulbar pathways as they go to the internal capsule, cerebral peduncle or the pons above the facial nucleus. Emotional facial paresis, the facial weakness seen only with emotional movements most commonly results from thalamic, thalamic or striatocapsular lesions, usually infarction, rarely with brainstem lesions. The dissociation may be due to bilateral supranuclear innervation for lower facial spontaneous emotional movements not present for volitional movements. The fibers that mediate emotional response travel through pathways other than the corticobulbar tracts. So very interesting central facial palsy especially the dissociation between emotional and the voluntary facial movements. So these are the wonderful uh, concepts of the central facial palsy. The other concepts of neurology, I put it in a question answer format in a book focused neurology written by me, Dr. Srinivas. This is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. If interested, this book could be purchased online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my concepts on the central facial palsy. If you have enjoyed it, please share the link, but like and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FP page, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.